Welcome. Let's talk about a video from the JTalon Media channel. JTalon is a flat earther uh, who specializes in filming long distance observations while flying on planes. And he frequently claims to uh, have made observations of objects as far as a thousand kilometers or more. And this is also the case in this video where he claims he has seen Baja California from Texas from 760 miles away, which is uh, some, somewhat above 1,200 kilometers. And the problem here is that uh, such observations shouldn't be possible on a globe Earth, as opposed to some other long distance observations that uh, flat earthers claim shouldn't be possible on a globe Earth, but actually are possible. But in this case, uh, this actually shouldn't be possible on a globe Earth. So if what he claims is true, then the globe Earth model uh, is in trouble. But yeah, the question is, is this actually true? So we'll try to figure this out today. So first, let's see what he's actually showing in the video. So uh, in the beginning, he shows us his approximate position and the place he claims uh, to see in, in the video. Uh, this, these are some mountains near a city called Cabo San Lucas. Uh, and they are 760 miles away from his position. Then he shows uh, the footage from the plane. Here in a moment, he's showing his uh, GPS position. So we can see his latitude, his longitude. There is even um, his altitude above the sea level. Then uh, he looks outside the window, first in visible light, then he applies an infrared filter like here, he zooms in a bit, then he does some color correction so that we can uh, see the terrain better. So we can see some mountains here and here. And so then he takes this frame and he marks what he claims uh, is there in, in the picture. So here, according to him, is the mountain near Cabo San Lucas. Uh, this here is the California Gulf. And those mountains here in the background are the California Peninsula, according to him. So is, uh, is this really what he's claiming, or is this something else? We'll see in a moment. In order to test J. Tolan's claims, I turned to a piece of software I created. It's available on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description. What it does is uh, it simulates panoramas uh, as they should be seen from a given place on Earth. So. Basically, it takes the observer's coordinates, it takes some data about the terrain, some data about atmospheric conditions, because it also simulates atmospheric refraction, and it generates the simulated view from that place. But what's important here as well is that it can do that both assuming that the Earth is a globe, as well as that the Earth is flat. So you can generate two different panoramas with those two assumptions from the same place, and you can check which one uh, fits reality better. But yeah, I'll elaborate a bit on this program in a separate video. Right now, let's just say that uh, I used it to create a panorama from the coordinates that Jay Tolan shows in his video to see if it fits what he shows. So let's see what the results are. What we see here is a frame from Jay Tolan's video, the one where he wrote what features are visible according to him. And I've added an overlay with the simulated panorama generated by my program. So it's now totally transparent. So let's see how well it matches uh, the view. Uh, let's turn our attention maybe first to this uh, ridge in the foreground with this mountain here, because this is what I used to fit the simulated panorama. So let me increase the opacity. And we see that there is such a ridge in, in the simulation. It's not very clearly visible because of the colors, unfortunately, but you can see that it is here. There is this mountain and this ridge in the foreground fits quite well. Let me decrease the opacity again. If I do this, then we can see that it matches pretty nicely. But the problem is with these mountains in the background because they don't fit that well. Let's see, for example, uh, at this mountain. Let's look at it. And if I decrease the opacity, it doesn't match anything here. But 
if we take a look at these three smaller peaks here, they are quite easy to discern from the rest of, of the view. So if I increase the opacity again, we can see that they are actually here, but they are slightly more to the left, those, those three. So if we take a look at the simulation, they are pretty much right above this bigger mountain here, uh, slightly to the left maybe. And if I decrease the opacity in the actual frame, they are quite a bit to the right of this bigger mountain. So what happened here? If we take another look at Jaytolin's video, we'll see that he shows the GPS coordinates at around 25 to 30 seconds into the video. And this is where I've taken the coordinates from uh, and used them in the panorama generator. But the actual photo that he's taken uh, is a bit later in the video. It's around one minute, one minute and 10 seconds maybe. Actually, he cuts the video at around 1.08. And yeah, later on when he does the color adjustment, if we compare those two parts of the video, we can see that the actual frame would be a few seconds later than the cut. So around one minute and 10 seconds into the video. And so this is a difference of about 45 seconds between when he shows the GPS coordinates at 25 seconds and when he takes the picture at one minute and 10 seconds. And a plane moves quite fast. So during those 45 seconds, it can cover quite a bit of distance, a few kilometers or a few miles, well, whichever unit you prefer. Mm, so this can change the, uh, the view quite a bit due to parallax and things like that. So we should, uh, we should try and get the actual position of the plane at the moment when he took the picture. So at one minute and 10 seconds. And can we do that? Actually, we can, thanks to two things. First, uh, if we take a look at those few seconds when he shows the position, we can see that the position changes a few times. Uh, about each second, it shows a new position. And there are five positions shown in total. So during five seconds, uh, the position changes uh, a few times. And we can use these positions to extrapolate the movement of the plane and, and calculate what the position should be at one minute and 10 seconds. And we can also do that because there are no cuts between, uh, between when he shows the position and the moment where he actually takes the frame, well, except this color adjustment cut but we already said that uh, the frame should be taken at about one minute and 10 seconds. And there are no other cuts here. This is one continuous sequence. So we can say with uh, pretty much certainty that uh, 45 seconds is the time that passed between uh, the time when he showed the position and when he took the frame. So we can use that to calculate the plane's position at the moment he took the picture. So let's do just that. I uh, I noted that times in the video were when the positions were shown. And I've also noted the positions themselves. Uh, I only took uh, the arc minute parts of, uh, of latitudes and longitudes because the degrees part didn't change and it will be easier to just interpolate the minutes. Then we can just add the degrees to, uh, to the result and we'll get the total latitude and total longitude. The, uh, the degrees for latitude were 32, the, for longitude it was 102. So those are the complete latitudes and longitudes uh, as a decimal fraction, not uh, yeah, with the arc minutes. So that's why there is the difference. 36 or 37 arc minutes is about 0 0.61 degrees. So that's what we get here. Then uh, I've taken those uh, latitudes and longitudes and interpolated them using linear interpolation. So that's what I had. What I have here, uh, I've just—it's just a fit for a linear function like y equals ax plus b. It's probably known from school. So here are the the a coefficients for latitudes and longitudes, and here are the b coefficients. Uh, you can use Excel formulas for that. Then when we have those A and B coefficients, we can input the time T equal to 70. So one minute and 10 seconds, it's 70 seconds into the video. Uh, so we can, we can input that into the function. The X here will be our time. So if we input those times, we should get approximately these positions. 
using those coefficients. And if we input time equal to 70, we should get the position of the plane when the picture was taken. So those are the arc minutes of the latitude and longitude. And if we add that to the degrees, then we have this latitude and this longitude. So those are the coordinates I'm, I'm going to use uh, to generate another panorama and see if that actually fits J. Tolan's view. Uh, a small note here, I'm, I'm actually assuming that when a plane moves, moves at a constant speed, that the coordinates will change linearly, which strictly speaking is not exactly true, because if the Earth is spherical, uh, then the coordinates change in a slightly complex way. But the point here is that uh, we are only talking about fractions of an arc minute here. So those are really, really small changes in coordinates. And on such small distances, we can safely assume that uh, for a constant speed, a linear approximation is a good one. So that's why I'm just using a linear function here instead of something more complex. It's just simpler and it's a good enough approximation. So to test this approximation, actually, uh, what I've done is calculated the speed of the plane. So those A coefficients here, they are actually uh, saying how much of an angle in coordinates, in latitude and longitude, the plane covers every second. So it's 0 0.045 arc minute per second for latitude and 0 0.1444 arc minute per second in longitude. So we can convert that to uh, actual speeds in meters per second, for example. So in latitude, we take this, uh, this is in arc minutes per second. So we need to divide this by 60 to get degrees per second. And one degree in latitude is equal to about 111 11 kilometers, so 111,000 meters. So I'm multiplying by that. And what we get here is 83.44 meters per second uh, in the north-south direction in the latitude. In longitude, we do the same. We divide the uh, speed in arc minutes per second by 60, so we get degrees per second. We multiply this by 111 kilometers. But uh, a degree in longitude, uh, the actual distance covered by a, the, a degree in longitude is different at different latitudes. For example, on poles, it is zero. On equator, it is again one, 111 kilometers. But in between, we just need to multiply this by, a, by the cosine of, uh, of latitude. So that's what I'm doing here. And what we get is that in the east-west direction, in the longitude direction, the plane is moving at about 225 meters per second. So now if we take those two speeds, uh, they are in orthogonal directions. If we take these two and use the Pythagorean theorem to get the total speed, we get about 240 meters per second. Converted to kilometers per hour, it's about 864 and it's about 537 miles per hour. So if we take another look at Jay Tolan's video, at the moment where he shows us the coordinates, we can see that the speed uh, told us by the GPS is 536 miles per hour, which is very close to uh, what we got here, 537. So yeah, so it looks like it's a really good approximation of, uh, of how the plane moved. So let's now get to checking if the panorama generated with those updated coordinates will actually fit the view. So we're looking at the frame from JTOLAN's video once again, and let's now see uh, how the updated panorama fits. So I made another layer in the picture with the panorama generated with the new coordinates, and let me increase the opacity. And now we can see that it actually fits much better. So this mountain in the foreground uh, still matches. Those three smaller peaks also match what is in the background. They are here. And we can see that what he marked as Cabo San Lucas is also there in the picture. It's right here. There is some peak, uh, some peak over here, but we don't know yet what it is. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, a view generated on the globe Earth, because I remind you that this view, this, uh, this generated panorama, is generated with the assumption that the Earth is actually a globe. It actually matches pretty nicely what Jay Tolan saw out of uh, his plane's window. So it looks like he 
actually, in reality, made this observation on a globe Earth. That's not the end of our analysis, though. As I mentioned before, my software is not only capable of generating panoramas on a globe Earth, but it can also simulate a flat Earth. So let's see what the difference is. This is, again, the panorama generated with the assumption that the Earth is a globe, and it is the one that matched J. Tolan's view perfectly. Let's now see how this would look if, uh, if the Earth was indeed flat. So this is the result. And we can see at once that it's completely different. There are a lot more mountain ridges here. And we can see a lot further. There is even some water here. It might be the California Gulf, but I'm not sure actually. But yeah, what we can see is that it's completely different from what J. Tolan actually saw out of the plane window. So yeah, that's another uh, piece of evidence that uh, he made his observation on a globe Earth. But that's still not everything. This is another piece of software I created. It's also open source and I'll link to it in the description. Uh, what it does is it lets me check the metadata for the generated panorama. So the ray tracer, actually what it does is not only generate the picture, but it also keeps all the data about uh, what pixel uh, corresponds to what geographical coordinates, what was the elevation and what was the distance from the observer at this point. So this, uh, this little program is what actually lets me read all this data. And when I click a pixel, it will show me the elevation, the distance, the latitude and longitude of this point. So if I click, for example, somewhere here, then it tells me that the elevation is 1,500 meters or almost 5,000 feet. The distance from the observer is 226 kilometers, 140 miles, and the latitude and longitude are as follows. So yeah, so let us see what the uh, terrain features here uh, actually are. So here is the mountain that J. Tolan marked as Cabo San Lucas. So let's see what this actually is. Let me click here. And we can see that uh, the elevation is this. And the distance, it's not 760 miles from the observer. It's just 214 miles or 345 kilometers. And we have the, the exact coordinates here. So let us put those coordinates into Google Maps and see what, uh, what is there. So here are the coordinates input into Google Maps. You can check that those are in fact the, the coordinates indicated by my program. And we can see that they actually correspond to a mountain with a matching elevation. So let us zoom out a bit and see where it is. Zoom out. And there is some kind of border here. Let's see what the border is. And if we zoom out even more, we can see that this mountain is actually not even in Mexico. It's still in Texas. So it's quite far away from Cabo San Lucas that J. Tolan said it is. So yeah, it's some mountain. It's just a mountain in Texas. But let us also check the other mountain, the one in the foreground. Okay, let me click on it so we can see it's 258 kilometers away from the observer or 160 miles and its elevation is, a, is slightly below 7200 feet and we get those coordinates so let's input them into google maps again and we can see again that yes there is such a mountain somewhere in texas it's here if we zoom out then it we'll see that it's somewhere near fort davis in texas uh, some YouTubers, I believe, identified it as a mountain called Blue Mountain. I'm not sure. It's not, it's not uh, marked here, so I'm, I don't know, but it might be the Blue Mountain in Texas. Uh, so yeah, again, we can see that uh, the terrain features that J. Tolan marked are not in Mexico, are nowhere near the Gulf of California. They are somewhere in Texas, and yeah, the flat terrain between uh, between the mountains in the background, which are these mountains, and the mountains in the foreground, is probably this plain here, and not the Gulf of California at all. So J. Tolan misidentified the features. Uh, I don't know if he did it on purpose or not, but yeah, 
as we can see, he definitely didn't debunk the globe. The Earth still looks like a globe, all right. And yeah, everything matches perfectly. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. And thanks for your attention.